People of America, we wish to share with you our thoughts on the events we experienced, as well as what the future may bear. And despite the madness we have endured and still, we see no harm in presenting you with the criminal nature of your newly re-elected emperor. Despite our belief that the elections were flawed, we know now that when there is a close tie between the candidates, there is something wrong. Some in our ranks believe that any candidate from any side of the spectrum are two faces of the same coin. You, the people, have said your word in what is claimed to be a democracy, and thus have chosen a leader who claims to represent your vision. It is your right to lead the world as it is the right of any nation which chooses to do so. Yet this does not allow you to conquer others. There is a belief of a large number of our people that a lot of the facts do not reach you, facts that may be classified as unsuitable for the general public, facts that are twisted to gain a positive image here or there. Nothing new to an emperor who represents deception, lies, crimes, half-victories and total defeats. Your administration, time after time, lied and presented you with achievements directed by Hollywood and performed in Iraq. You have elected these criminals and thus you are responsible for their actions. We hope that your future decisions will be based on reason and belief, for your emperor tomorrow will mirror the image of America to the world, and by his actions will your empire be measured. And for the first time in history, a mafia of the weapons plants represented by Bush, oil companies represented by Dick Cheney, and the Zionists represented by Paul Wilfowitz and Richard Pearl, hijacked the United States of America in an ingenious plan control the world. This type of administration is exactly what Benjamin Franklin once warned of. By weakness and ignorance, you have allowed this gang of criminals to hijack your country, create a new phobia to recruit those whom they regard as nothing but fuel and vehicles to their master plan. This administration will enforce on you, just as it tries to enforce on our people, new laws that will result in a police state similar to those your consecutive governments back in our region. Legislation will soon be drafted by the appointed puppets to allow foreign ownership of land and structure, and soon our people will be the foreigners on the land of their forefathers. This new world order will enslave people of all religions and race, and soon your children, as well as ours, if they survive, will truly live in a planet of apes. And with a reduced population for ease of control, this can only be the implementation of a plan once presented by Henry Kissinger. This world has not yet seen an empire which constitutes in its prime objectives the destruction and genocide of whole populations and societies only to control the energy resources of this planet. Your representatives and their media have portrayed an image that an insurgency is in effect and that it is led by elements of foreign fighters entering from Syria and neighboring countries. Yet we assure you, this is only a continuation of what Bush once claimed, mission accomplished. This resistance movement was prepared for and is only the second chapter of this war and we are mostly, if not all Iraqis, proud Iraqis, who kept their oath to defend people and country. And because this war may last longer than what the invaders anticipated, we have all promised to make their stay long, costly and painful. Blaming other countries is nothing but creating new pretexts to invade other sovereign states and back future expeditions. They have made our country a battlefield to settle accounts with elements of Al-Qaeda, formerly dear allies and partners. They have also created new phobias to justify their continued presence, despite their loss of this war. And for the general media, we call on them to think about what they declare, and not fear death and imprisonment. Do not fall into the traps prepared by those who pull the strings from Tel Aviv. As for the declared casualties, this is an epic on its own. We assure you that the figures are far higher than they declare. It is not a secret today in Iraq what we call the green card soldiers. Young men from South America and other parts of the world gathered and promised the U.S. citizenship and large sums of cash for their mercenary services in Iraq. They are always on the front lines and their casualty figures are never declared. They are hidden in unmarked graves and dumped into rivers under the cover of moonless nights, some of which the resistance provided evidence of. There are also a large number of security contractors who are not listed as military personnel. 
To us, it is one thing to be tricked into this war, but it is totally different to come here and fight someone else's war. After the failed American elections in Iraq, they will now play the sectarian card. They are already sending their mercenaries to destroy churches and mosques alike in order to prepare the ground for civil war. They will train more and more local traitors to conduct police operations and detention raids on anyone who does not accept democracy performed at the muzzle of a barrel. The local mercenaries will also act as sandbags to their masters when we choose to strike. The non-conduct of your troops has also taken its toll on our people. It has created resentment and disgust. They dismiss these war crimes as isolated cases, yet the figures are always on the rise. What's more, our scandals of Abu Ghraib, Kalka, and the use of chemical weapons on Fallujah, and only God knows what's to come. Life under dictatorship is far more safer than behind the bars of your democracy. Have you not asked yourselves, where are the weapons of mass destruction? And where are the links between our previous government and the once CIA-sponsored Al-Qaeda? Or is that all now a thing of the past? What happened to the thousands of people who died and continue to die of cancer? Women who give birth to deformed babies caused by the effect of your military's depleted uranium shells. Since 1990, thousands on both sides of the conflict have suffered unknown illnesses. Many have died since then, and others lack medical attention. Large parts of Iraq will be radioactive for millions of years to come. And if we were to return this radiating material to the U.S. and Britain, it would be no different than those who use them. May we ask you, why do you think the British government decided to set foot only in the areas of the South, where the resistance is still partially active? They have left the difficult areas for your boys to suffer. This deal was accepted by your government, only to form a purely cosmetic alliance with a nation that still strives for the glory of its imperial past. They have turned the land of the free into a camp of capitalist slavery, and then changed the home of the brave into a printing house for papers they called dollars, and guarded it with enormous military might. This administration, which claims that you have re-elected, has brought on more humiliation and insults to each and every one of you than any other government in your short yet tremendous history. And as odd as it may seem, we advise you to take matters in your own hands and rid this world of such criminals or any form of government which resembles the neocons in their aims. Form a third party if need be. Appoint those who resist preemptive war as true representatives of the people before it is too late. And if demonstrations and protests are not heard, use and protect what is left of your constitution and correct matters by force. This world awaits your move. Today these words may seem strange, but we believe that a nation which once gave the world John F. Kennedy, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Hughes and Henry Ford will not fall short of giving true leaders of substance and dignity. This war has taught us that one man on the field can change the outcome of a day. One man who believes in true freedom can do what nations put together dare think of. We share these thoughts with great honesty to those of you who spent days and nights trying to prevent this war, timeless efforts to prevent this real holocaust. To all of you we say, thank you for your time. <laughs>